everybody, how's it going? Uh, happy kickoff. Um, I'm Greg Nidell with Rev Robotics. Uh, I'm Mike Quirk with Rev Robotics. We're just going to stream and kind of talk through some of the new game stuff. And uh, we're going to work on uh, some different prototypes, basically for rookie teams and inexperienced teams who might have gotten the Rev uh, starter kit in the storefront. So we were talking about a little bit of ways that you can uh, latch on and kind of get back onto the lander and also deploy yourself off. One of the things that really came to mind was our linear lift system. So we have one of these in demonstration that is a multiple stage lift. Um, this is probably a lot bigger than what we need to do and we might need to have a system that's a little bit more rigid, especially if we're looking at pulling a 42 pound robot. So we're gonna take this idea and kind of run with it and see what we're able to get. Hey guys, just checking in on our linear uh, our linear slide so we're gonna the general concept is where we have a, a two pieces of extrusion with with another longer one sandwiched in between we have a lot of within the one kit we're using uh, the slides are on each side and we also have our, our, our little buffers in the middle here so this is a relatively rigid uh, rigid system so then we're going to be able to hopefully latch on and lift ourselves back up to that lander so we worked on the uh, mechanism that would be used for latching and deployment um, in the match and we bolted it on to just one of our kind of generic demo platforms that we have here uh, Basically what we used was we just used uh, one of the one of the rev uh, linear motion kit v2s uh, Which is actually all you needed for this and three pieces of extrusion There's a little bit of optimization that has to happen here in regards to the lengths and how much it moved But because we're just prototyping we kind of just put something together to get it doing um, so basically what we have here is we have it in a configuration with a core hex motor on the bottom which pulls this down and then a piece of surgical tubing so that this center piece or the hook is spring loaded up. We went with that configuration um, because you're going to be started up in a closed position and then when you release it down the weight of the robot should extend this and then during the match if you wanted to pull this down so it was out of the way you could just pull activate the core hex motor and then when you're ready for the end of the match you release the core hex motor and then this will pop up so you can pull. So that's the configuration we went with this. Um, so it really is only power in one direction and a spring on the other one. Um, we put a couple mid-level mid sliders in between the extrusions so that it has a really good uh, support left to right and then we used the uh, the double slide blocks on both the front and the back side to make sure that it's got plenty of support. So if you want to check it out, we've got, you can see we have slide blocks on both sides. Um, also with this kit, with this uh, demo chassis that we had, we had this piece of extrusion that was kind of sitting up and over here and we tried to mount it as well, originally creating that triangle. So this isn't really going to go uh, anywhere and we just, on the bottom we have it just attached with a couple of lap brackets. So. Yeah. You just, one of the things you'll need to do is, is, is because you are lifting your whole robot, just like any year that you have to lift, you have to make sure that whatever your lifting mechanism is, is as rigidly mounted to your chassis as you possibly can. We don't have a real lander, so we built one um, out of our you know, one inch extrusion and just a piece of wood. Um, we uh, were able to get one of the actual real brackets. So if you don't have a full lander and you want to do this, you can actually just get these little brackets from Andy Mark for $4 and build a wood structure and make sure the bracket's in the right place. So um, this, that's kind of what we're doing. One of the big things that you're going to want to make sure though is that the, the lander plate is at the right length because that's going to become a big factor and we're going to talk about that in a little bit but making sure that this is going to be as close to spec as you can get it uh, for your testing. All right so um, the plan here is as you would start the match uh, this would be like the end of match configuration. Um, as we said before the hook's not really the right thing for this so I'm going to manually position it um, but right there and you can actually pull it up okay so um, for the beginning of the match um, you have to be four inches off the uh, off the ground of all places and so what we noticed is while we are four inches off the ground on the back, we actually are dipping down uh, quite a bit in the front um, where we're probably not quite at four inches. Um, some of that has to do with 
the displacement of the actual hanger. We used just off the shelf our default lengths. We didn't do any cutting. Um, so if we took this rail, this back rail of the robot, moved it up and then just changed the displacement to six or seven inches, we'd be able to get a lot more than four inches off the ground. But that's gonna be something you're gonna have to think about is where the hook actually is for displacement. So you could start the match generally in this position where you're up. Um, and that displacement actually only matters at the beginning of the match because at the end of the match, it doesn't appear like there's a rule that tells you how far you have to be off the ground. It just seems like you have to be off the ground just a little bit. So um, we're hooked on, we've started the match. Autonomous begins. And so you do that and then you can basically just slide off. If we dropped it off. If we dropped it enough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So then you can just drive off. Um, well, I think hook design is actually the harder part of this than the actual elevator part itself because it feels like that's pretty easy. We, also, we haven't tested this with a 42 pound robot, but if you are gonna build a really heavy robot, make sure that you've got enough uh, that everything is built to that scale of mechanism. One of the big things that you would wanna check out is our motor guide. It has a lot of the power uh, and also talks about how to actually come up with those calculations for how much weight that you have within your system to make sure that you have enough torque so your lift is gonna be able to work and be successful on the field. Yeah, the other thing that, that weight comes into play is about back driving. Um, inherently because of the, the ratio that we've, we, we are just doing one-to-one -one on a core hex motor where the string is wrapped around the hex shaft. Because of that, this doesn't back drive, but this robot's really light. So if your robot was a lot heavier, it'd be probably more inclined to back drive. So you may want to consider adding like a servo with a little latch on it um, because you really don't want to stall the motor. And especially when you start the match, your motor won't be able to be powered to hold you up. So. That's something else to consider is how are you going to be hanging both before the match and after the match if your robot's not actually giving any power to the motor. So you have to uh, consider how that's going to work. But overall we think that with um, just three pieces of extrusion, um, the linear motion kit, and then a couple extra structural pieces to make sure that it's really solid, um, we were pretty able, simply able to build a robot that can all, that can lift itself off the ground at the end. Hey, so the next thing that we uh, wanted to talk about was uh, intakes and pickups. Um, we decided to kind of focus on um, pickups of a single type. Um, there are probably mechanisms that you're gonna wanna look at about how to sort balls from cubes, but we kinda wanted to focus on one. So we had the idea based on a uh, how a uh, tennis player's pickup tennis uh, balls off the court where they have like a cage and the tennis balls kind of flex and go through the cage and so one way that we were talking about doing that was basically building a little rack and putting some surgical tubing here because when you take this and you kind of come down on a ball it the ball goes through the surgical tubing really easily and kind of holds it there but with a cube because it doesn't have any low in cube is not actually going to be able to be picked up. The cube is not going to be able to be picked up by the same uh, mechanism. So this is one where you know we could envision some sort of basket where um, you could come down and maybe just grab balls. That's a pretty easy way to do it. One of the other mechanisms that we kind of prototyped here was um, a more spinning intake. Um, and what this is, is this uses surgical tubing supported by uh, in between two sprockets and this allows for compliance so when this spins it kind of acts like a rigid cylinder but as it spins in um, regardless of the shape um, it would have a little bit of compliance as you can see you know this needs to be get tweaked and the rest of the robot will play a big impact on if this works or not but um, it's Intakes like this have been used for a number of different years um, with a bunch of different game objects. So, and these are really easy to build with the parts that are in your uh, your starter kit. So, these were two things. Um, I think we might move forward and try to refine this one a little bit more uh, because it showed a lot of promise. But um, that's uh, kind of our first take on uh, manipulating game objects. But we worked on this uh, 
pickup mechanism for a little bit longer, the one that was inspired by the tennis ball hopper. Uh, we've now dubbed this thing the fry basket because of how it looks. Uh, but basically, this is a little container that will hold just balls. It still has the uh, surgical tubing on the bottom of it. Um, we've played with the size of this just a little bit to maybe a little bit optimize how much it needs to spread. This is something that on a final robot design we'd have to focus on to make sure that this was the right spacing and size. But what this does is this would be kind of mounted to an arm on a robot, maybe so that you could, your drivetrain would be on one side and you wouldn't actually have to go into the crater. But all you have to do is go down, all you have to go is go down on top of the balls pretty easily and it grabs them on and it actually the balls will sit on this rail and so you have to go really far over center before they drop out so since the crater wall is directly in line with the lander's uh, ball side the idea of a robot with an arm that could go over here kind of slam down and just pick up balls and then reach back over and then score them in the lander uh, might be a really decent accessible thing for a lot of rookie teams and teams that are looking for a pretty quick way to get a bunch of points. This is a standard six wheel drive drivetrain um, using the kit wheels and this is the type of drivetrain you can build from our kit. Um, this is the uh, this is the uh, crater wall and what we want to show is that if you build a, a chain drive um, with the wheel exposed and you go up to this, you actually can pretty easily um, get up and over it. But this is where the challenge comes in. You actually can see the chain is rubbing right on the top of the, uh, the chain is rubbing right on the top of the, uh, the crater, and that's an issue. But we think that we could route that chain higher using an idler sprocket, but then the next thing comes into play. And then if you keep driving with your rear wheels back on the ground, and you drive forward, once you get that center wheel to engage and you get here, unless your robot's center gravity is way, way down at the back, or maybe even way far forward where it carries you down, continuing to drive forward, you're gonna end up on your back. So center of gravity is actually gonna become one of the biggest challenges um, with drivetrain design. Uh, checking back in here on our drivetrain, um, we've taken our six wheel drive, uh, drivetrain that had the 90 millimeter traction wheels on it and we've converted it to a 10 wheel drive with 60 millimeter wheels on it. So we did that to get more points of contact um, with the ground kind of following the same uh, the same premise as like tank treads um, and so what I wanted to show you was as this goes up you can actually tell um, it will it will definitely work better to have more smaller wheels than one bigger wheel. Um, we still have to worry about the center of gravity of your drivetrain, um, but if you'll notice, this drivetrain um, will do this two different ways, right? So if you do it front ways, where in this case, the center of gravity of this drivetrain is all the way at the back, as you, as you go over this thing, mind you, this is not powered, um, you'll notice that you get to the back here and you're still very, very back loaded, right? So the second you come off, you're still likely to tip. But if you go at this the other direction, right, where now the center of gravity is more over here, um, um, and it goes up and over, by the time you reach the clearance on the third wheel on each side, it actually wants to tip in. So if climbing, into the crater is part of your strategy, making sure that a, maybe a smaller wheel setup where your center of gravity is biased towards the inside of the crater when you approach it might really make a big impact on uh, your drivetrain decision. A couple of things we noticed, while this thing definitely goes over the crater wall uh, much easier, um, we also now have this problem where we can't turn. So um, one of the things that's our next version of this prototype that we would probably do if we were going to continue with it is um, we would want to uh, vary the height of these wheels. Um, we have these variable um, adjustable uh, mounts so we can adjust the, the height of all the individual wheels, maybe give it a more curved shape or maybe drop the center three and leave these two or lastly maybe even go as far as to put omni wheels 
in a couple places on the on this actual drivetrain. So there's a couple new uh, manipulations on it, but um, I think that if you want to get a simple drivetrain that can get over um, into the crater, if that's part of your strategy, um, you might looking uh, looking at doing something like this. But you're going to need to modify it so that you can turn on the open floor. We're uh, wrapping up our build day today and I just wanted to kind of do an overview of everything that we've done um, just to kind of see all the ideas. Uh, we built a really simple lift that can manage doing the latching and deployment for your team on a field. Um, still some work that would need to be done on the actual hook itself. Um, we did the fry basket uh, pickup which does picking up of balls. Um, for manipulating those and also we have a regular kind of style intake which also works. Um, we have the 10 wheel drive which seems to do okay on the uh, the actual crater wall but you know this is what we've been able to do in about a day and so we know that your team can kind of take some of these ideas and over the next uh, week or several weeks and months uh, you'll be able to expand these and make them your own. You definitely have to figure out how to system integrate this into an actual robot, but we hope that these ideas that you can build mostly with stuff from your from your Rev Starter Kit uh, really help your team uh, as you're moving throughout the season. Yeah. And what we're really looking forward to is seeing what types of designs that you're able to take, maybe take some of our ideas and run with them, see all the other great streams and conversation that are going on from some other channels as well. Uh, we're really excited to see the competition this game's challenge looks like a looks like a good one. Yeah, so uh, good luck, have a great season, and if you ever need any help or anything, um, feel free to uh, check out our guides and also reach out to us. Uh, we're always uh, willing to help and support. Good luck. Yeah, have a great season.